Marie Montessori, I believe, said it best when she described learning as educating the human potential. Way too often we think about education or we think about learning as something we do to other people. I'm actually often dismayed and say publicly uh, probably too often that I'm very frustrated when people and organizations have confused the words training and learning. Training is something that you do to someone else or you provide for them, but learning is what we can only do for ourselves. It's what we take in. It's what changes us. It's what allows us to have the, the nourishment, the nutrients, um, not just from a physical sense, but from a mental perspective to be able to create, to do, to be more than we were before we learned whatever it is that we've learned. Uh, the conferences that I attend do very much the educating and the training part of this equation very well. They deliver innovative uh, unusual, interesting examples for people to, in theory, latch onto, to listen to, to think about how they can apply to them. But they don't take that next step, which is ask them to actively engage in that learning process while they're at the events, while the, the ideas are fresh in their minds. Twitter, for example, has provided a different layer, and that has uh, bypassed a lot of the specific things we've done at events by allowing people to reflect on what's going on in order to share that. You think to yourself, oh, now that's an interesting idea. I'd like to share that right now. Well, that allows you to build that mental pathway. It allows you to connect with that idea and share that, which is a wonderful step in the road to learning and taking ownership of that yourself. But so many of us find the best conversations are the ones in the hallway. Uh, they're the ones where we get to just have conversations with people. And the more opportunity we have to have those conversations, be it even from the back of a conference room, of participating in an online community, for example, of the event, or after the event, or even before the event, the more active engagement we can have with those ideas, the active reflection and the taking action based on what we hear allows us to make all the difference. It allows us to take those ideas and not just be something put out into the world, to spray and pray uh, that we often hear about in education, but allows us to take those ideas and to make a difference in the world with what we're hearing. Uh, just this morning, I had the opportunity to talk with a large client of mine, and they're an international organization in over 260 countries. And the head of HR who I was speaking with it was sharing that he aims for having learning agility throughout his organization. And what he means by that and how it affects them and their brand is that he wants people to hear new ideas and be able to put those into practice quickly and easily. Learning isn't just the taking in, but it's the application. It's a thinking about how we're going to use what we're taking in and apply that at the moment of need to what the business needs done. I found that to be a wonderful example, specifically in a, uh, say an organization that we all know of, uh, as a focus that I was actually a little surprised that they had, but the idea of taking information in and being able to apply it at that moment of need. That to me is a learning culture. That's one where people aren't fearful that they're going to say the wrong thing or that if they share something that people will lash out or that they will make fun of them or they will be penalized in some sort of way because of it, but instead they're nurturing and they're comforting and they're, they're thrilled that people are learning and doing things all the time. One of my favorite examples of a learning culture in a conference experience comes from Gary Ridge, who's the CEO of WD40 Company. And what he has done in the events that he has created for his organization and when he speaks at a conference himself is that he begins each event, each talk with the simple question, this is what I have learned since I saw you last. Now, in the case of conferences, that isn't really a 
inexplicable because you probably haven't seen or heard from that person before. But by opening the door to hearing the answer to that question, it allows speakers to reflect on what that they're experiencing. And especially when it is someone that you've heard from before, even the person who's doing the moderating, the announcing, they can talk about what they've learned since they were up on the stage the last time. But to take an active role of reflecting on what we are learning does a couple of different things. One, it shares what you've just learned. Maybe you didn't hear that little piece of the story, or maybe you hadn't thought about it in that way, and now you can share it, so you're giving people a chance to hear it again. So just the sharing of the knowledge all over again, very helpful. But it also helped people be able to prevent from stepping in those holes. So you may say, you know, last time I talked to you, or the what I was doing recently was thinking I was going to take action in this particular way, but now that I'm a little wiser and a little older, and it's been a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a couple of years since we've spoken. I've learned that was a really bad idea. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Don't follow in my footsteps. Remember I told you that was a good idea? Mm, bad, bad, bad plan. And by actively asking people to do a little bit of a sort of a post-mortem, but a reality check as to what they're learning and what they as individuals have learned, you're able to bridge that learning gap with the people in your audience, and each person is modeling a learning character, a learning agility, a care of learning. Uh, Gary has taken the same practice inside of his organization. Every meeting the company has, they begin the meeting that way. It's not, let me tell you all that I've done, but what have I learned since I saw you last? I, uh, I shared this story with a, a dean of a business school that I work with, and, and he sort of rolled his eyes, and, and he said, well, I don't really want to do that at work, but I would love to do that in my family. I would love to do that around the dinner table. I'd love to have my family be sharing what it is that they've learned since we had dinner even just the night before to allow people to be reflective in that sort of way. And that's what I encourage you to do at your event. Even when you're organizing the events, each of you should be asking that question, making that part of the culture, making that part of the actions that you take in your company. Uh, you can find way more information about me at marciaconner.com, M-A-R-C-I-A-C-O-N-N-E-R.com. Also, you can always find me on Twitter at Marsha Marsha, M-A-R-C-I-A, M-A-R-C-I-A, with a little homage uh, to Marsha Brady, for, because all the, over the years I've had so many people say to me, oh, have you heard that before? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard that just a few times. Uh, you can also find me on Amazon.com and your local bookstore. I have uh, several books and another one coming out hopefully next winter. And um, I'd love to speak at your events and at conferences in a city near you. 